Once every month or so, we like to bulk cook breakfast burritos for my husband to take to work. We calculated that this saves us close to $200 over having him buy the same burrito from the cafeteria at work. I'm gonna do a quick analysis here to show you the difference between bargain shopping and just shopping at Walmart. Here I have actual prices listed out between my bargain store shopping versus actual Walmart grocery online prices. My total ended up being $23.55. Whereas comparable ingredients in the same quantity from Walmart grocery totaled $57.34. We made 37 burritos. If my husband were to buy a burrito at work, it would cost him $6. The retail price of all these burritos would be $222. Whether you buy your ingredients from discount grocery stores like I did, or you shop traditional stores like Walmart, you're going to save a lot of money by making your own food. This $33.79 difference represents the amount that we saved by shopping discount stores, warehouse stores, and buying foods close to expiration, and preserving them by freezing them. These are the ingredients that we use for our burritos. I know they're not the healthiest, but they are what my husband will buy and eat anyway. And trust me, I've tried healthier ingredients to no avail. You can tailor these to your dietary preferences by adding vegetables, making them vegetarian, whatever you prefer. You can see that the meat is frozen, and I found that if I take it out of the freezer 30 minutes before I plan to use it, score the packaging down one side lengthwise, and then all around the circumference, that I can remove the packaging easily and not waste meat by having it be stuck to the packaging. These sausage rolls I was able to buy from the 99 cent store and they cost a dollar each. I do slow cook the sausage meat and this makes my life much easier and my husband is fine with the resulting texture. The night before, I'll start the slow cooker on high and let it go for about five to six hours. We're starting the bulk of the burrito making the next day. It's about 1.15. We start with four dozen eggs. I got these eggs from Aldi. They were 92 cents a dozen. Grocery outlet had cheese, two pounds for 2.97. For the tortillas, we buy them from Costco. They're two dozen for 3.69. We begin by cracking all the eggs. I'm probably preaching to the choir here since I'm sure that a lot of you awesome viewers are frugal, but please sweep the inside of your eggs to get every last bit out. Here my son didn't and you can see we have 43 grams of egg. Just from him doing some quick sweeps, he was able to get an extra 2 grams of eggs. Multiply that by the 48 eggs we have here and that's 96 grams of eggs. That's close to 2 whole eggs that you're throwing away if you don't sweep the insides. And the sausage meat has cooled so I removed all the sausage meat and placed Place it on a plate. I like to cook my eggs in a really large stock pot. I start by heating it up, let it come up to temperature, and then add the oil. I like to use a small piece of a paper napkin and use that to spread the oil all along the sides of the stock pot. This really helps in cleanup at the end. For the eggs, I put one or two teaspoons of salt into it and then dump it directly into the pot. While the eggs are cooking, I'm scrambling it at the same time. So I'm breaking up all the yolks and integrating the salt into the eggs. Here I have my pot at a medium high heat. And due to the sheer amount of eggs, I found that I have one or two minutes that I can go and do some cleaning while the eggs are coming up to temperature. So I do some cleaning and then go back to the pot, mix it up a little bit, clean up some more, and do some more mixing. This really helps to make the cleanup process at the end much, much easier. Does anybody spy my special YouTube lamp? You can see that the eggs are still a little bit wet, but I've turned off the heat by now. The residual heat from the pot will continue cooking the eggs. If you let it cook till the eggs are completely done like it is now, you'll have really overcooked eggs. This is a stack of two dozen tortillas. To make the tortillas pliable, I wrap them in a wet towel and microwave them for about a minute. I try to find the longest diameter of the tortilla and have that be the length of the burrito. This makes folding them much easier. Then I put the egg and the meat on that diameter line. I try to make them about the same size as my hash brown piece. And then I put maybe two tablespoons of cheese and then the hash brown on top. These hash browns came from Grocery Outlet and they were $2.99 for 20 of them. 
to fold the burrito, I first fold the ends. And you can see there's about a half an inch to an inch of overlap onto the hash brown. And you can see my thumb pressing down on the tortilla to kind of make the tortilla make sort of a triangle shape. I'm basically wrapping that edge all around the filling. And then I lift up that side to make sure that it wraps the burrito really well. And for the other side, I do the same thing. I make sure that the top and the bottom layer of the tortilla are wrapping the filling really well and then just continue to roll the burrito over. This one has a really small hole, but that won't cause any of the filling to come out. And to store the burritos, I just use the bags that the tortillas came with. And here I'm just showing you another one that I'm making at speed. I found that the top and the bottom folds are the most critical to keeping the burritos together. So if you have at least a half an inch on both the top and bottom here, and then you indent the those edges so that they wrap around the filling, you'll have the best chance of keeping your burrito together. We were able to make a total of 37 burritos for this batch. You'll notice in some of them I ended up using french fries. I didn't have the receipt anymore but I did get that from the 99 cent store and it cost me a dollar. These fries ended up making the burritos a little more difficult to wrap but it ended up working pretty well and my husband said he liked them. Okay, now we've exhausted all of our filling and I'm just going to package all of the burritos for the freezer. I just use the bags that the tortillas came with. If you know the Costco tortillas, you'll know that each dozen is wrapped in a plastic bag and then those two dozen are within one giant kind of Ziploc bag. So that's all I use to keep it in the freezer and we haven't had any issues with freezer burn. We do go through these quite quickly, so I'm pretty sure that's a pretty big factor in that. Now it's about 3 o'clock and we're pretty much done. We ended up making 7 bags in total, 5 bags had 5, and 2 bags had 6. The night before, we'll take a couple out of the freezer and place it in the fridge to thaw. When we're ready to cook it, we place it in our heavy bottom stainless steel pan, seam side down, cover it, turn the heat to low. We let it go for about 15 minutes. Your cooking times may vary. When the timer goes off, we turn off the heat, flip it, and let it sit for the remaining time that it takes us to get ready for work. This doesn't add much to our routine, and the resulting burrito tastes better than having it just microwaved. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day to watch my video. I hope you were able to get something valuable out of this. Please like and subscribe for more videos outlining how we try to live more frugally and minimally. I hope to see you next time, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.